there was a recent study done uh, to figure out whether or not it makes sense for parents to be honest with their teenagers about their past drug use. Now this is a fascinating question because mm. even though I don't have children myself, I've always wondered, what's the best policy? Is it honesty or is it lying to your kids and pretending like you were an angel when you were a teenager? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the study published in uh, the journal Human Communication Research examined drug surveys of nearly 600 American 6th, 7th, and 8th graders that questioned their attitudes toward drugs, whether they use drugs, and what kinds of messages their parents were giving them. Children who reported that their parents told them about regretting their own past substance uh, abuse uh, or use were less likely to have anti-substance use perceptions. So they're more likely to be open-minded toward using these drugs or experiment with mm -hmm. them, which I find really, really interesting. So mm -hmm. I guess the moral of the story is don't be honest with your kids. Pretend like you've never used drugs mm -hmm. because what happens is you tell your teenager, look, I, I had like a cocaine binge and it was really, really bad. I, I almost died. I overdosed. I was in the hospital. The, even if you list all the negative things, the only thing your teenager is going to hear, according to this one study, mm -hmm. is, oh my God, my mom or my dad did drugs, which means they're okay now, which means I can experiment with it and I'll be fine later. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give a disclaimer. I haven't read the study. It's also possible that this isn't causal. It could be that something is causing both the increased likelihood mm -hmm. of telling your kids about your drug use and them having the non-anti-drug use uh, beliefs. Um, but I actually, I, I'm a bit depressed by this because I sometimes think about, you know, what sort of parenting strategy I would want to use if I ever had a kid and um, was responsible and claimed that it was actually mine and was willing to, to raise it. Um, and I'm, I, I always imagine that, you know, I'm a, I'm a lib and I've gone to graduate school. Like, I will reason with this child and tell him the right things that he should do and he will go out and do them. Um, but apparently that won't actually work because the psychology of a kid is fundamentally dissimilar from the psychology of an adult. And what I actually wanted to talk about based on this was, uh, just a week ago, I think, Cenk was talking about how he reasons with pro. And he was like, I can just tell him what to do, and I, I give him the argument, and he does it. Uh -huh. Do you think that pro is like the one in a million child who is like completely logical at age you know, one or whatever? Or do you think that, that Cenk is deluding himself? And the kid's actually going to go out there and do something bad. Can I, can I guess at this? I'm uh -huh. sorry, Anna, you can go first if you had something. No, no, no. I, I'm curious to see what you have to say. I'm not a parent, so I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, let the parents... Go ahead. Um, I think, well, first off, you're, you're, you're kind of banking on your kid's personality, their natural tendencies. If they're a type that... Because I have four siblings. Some of us listen and figure things out and then take it in and then internalize it. And some of us don't. It's just the nature of what child it is. So it's, it's the luck of the draw in that aspect. Number two, I think Pro is just over two years old. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. When he's 14, he's not going to listen to that. Oh, that's I, a good point. That is a good point, and that's actually <laughs> what I wanted to say. I mean, a, a two-year-old is very different from a rebellious teenager. When mm -hmm. you're a teenager, taller. you become definitely taller. Um, yeah. When you're a teenager, you become a lot more curious about bad things. Yeah. Um, and and you, you are much more open to experimenting, and you have... Um, access to mm -hmm. those types of things. As a two-year-old, you don't even yeah. know what those things are. Well, so. I, I mean, I, I'm not a parent, too, but I have heard about the terrible twos, and apparently two is when they begin to like automatically, naturally, psychologically rebel against their parents, yeah. but not in drug use. It's like, I'm going to crawl this way or something, <laughs> or walk. I guess he's walking by now. Um, but yeah, you're to that's a very good point. Um, but I think it's going to be interesting to see, like, so So uh, Pro is a little bit older than uh, the children of both Jesus and JR, but I wonder how they're going to approach it in the future. Yeah, are you well, guys going to be on about your drug use, not that you guys have ever done any drugs no. or anything bad in your life. I'd have to be life. honest about alcohol, but um, mm -hmm. but that's the thing, and I wonder because I don't have a drug use past, then it's going to give me less credibility. Like, mm -hmm. well, you don't even know what you're talking about, Dad. Uh, you never did it. Uh, that right. may be the hurdle I may have to go, uh, I may have to approach. But um, again, I'm one of those people, I'm going to be one of those fathers who is, I don't know, I guess naive enough to believe at 14, and I've had this conversation. I think I can. I think he's gonna because I I did, I internalized things and I figured out straight away at fourteen because I watched what people did wrong and it was uh -huh. my other siblings, but I think he'll listen. I could be wrong. I'm willing to believe mm -hmm. that I'll be totally wrong, but I'm gonna approach it saying I'm gonna tell him straight up and tell him why and full reasoning, mm -hmm. and I think he's gonna pick up on it.